comfortable on both Revenant and Twin Blast, maybe picking up Twin Blast first pick, but at the same time, NATO's pretty comfortable on Sparrow as well. We'll have to see. Reborn taking their time with the second ban. Uh, yeah, I mean, lots of options here. Do you ban out Phasma off a of face? Do you take away the Decker? Do you get rid of Grux and say meds you can't have Grux? And that's exactly what they do. I think that's the best ban they could have done. <laughs> After yeah. seeing that game, the last two games with meds. Uh, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that ban. And uh, Team Oxygen Esports is going to pick up Lieutenant Balika right off the bat. Reborn wastes no time into the CC Snap powerhouse that is Decker and Rampage. You want crowd control? We got the god dang crowd control, Shane. Decker Rampage. Uh, feels like we're back to November. Twin Blast. Okay, so they are going to pick up the Twin Blast here. So Reborn. It's been Sparrow Murdoch. Uh, well, I mean, let me rephrase that. It's been Sparrow. Um constantly really the only other hero i mean i doubt it's going to be a yen or a grimix we i, I don't think we've seen I, I would love to see grimix or yen that would be really really cool i doubt it though i, I think sparrow's a go-to choice here i would love to see phase sparrow um but decker's already locked in so that's really not a viable situation there's the graystone picked up reflect put on a great graystone game uh yesterday as well as the draft that's happening right now do you see the so, draft oh and okay we have a uh, Yen, let's, let's so Yen, what does she bring to the table that the other carries don't? A couple of things. The main thing is her DPS output is actually ridiculous, and she, she is as hyper of a carry as Sparrow, if not, oh yeah, more so. Late game with the stuns, and I mean they're going to be able to to lock a target down and blow this target up. Now, now I, I said okay, Team Oxygen Esports is going to pick up Severog Shane. And their next pick up here looks like it's either going to be a support Phasma, most likely on face. But okay. Shane, if you look at this draft minus Yin, Solo Nazgul has the ability to pick up Gideon. There is no hard ooh, CC you're right. on the side of Team Oxygen Esports. This, ooh. And there it is. The there Gideon it is. Pickup. Boys, we got Yin and Gideon on the same team and Rampage. I don't know what year it is right now, Notch. I'm, I'm confused. All they need was an Iggy, and I'd say we're back on Legacy. No. Uh, this is, uh, both of these drafts are very strong. We saw Nazgul on Gideon yesterday, though. Reborn punished teams light on CC through this Gideon pickup. They use the black hole not as a damage ability, but as a control and team fight decimation ability. I expect that to be the case here. And don't forget about a combination I don't think we've seen before. Quivering Gale. Setting up for Gideon's ultimate? That's ridiculous. I said, dude, oh, I, I paused I and I made sure I said I it, it right. I paused and I, I was like, say it correctly. Quivering Gale nailed it. <laughs> Shane, looking at this draft instantly right off the bat, 100% reborn based off the, off the draft has this match. They've got the engage. They've got the CC. They've got the control. They have everything they need to dominate. Wait, I said Quivering Gale. Esports. You said Quivering Gale. Oh, dang it. I, I wanted to make it so, like, to a point to not say Quivering Gale, and I said it anyways. <laughs> uh. It's Again, we're going to change it to Mystic Flare and Quivering Gale. I'm petitioning Epic <laughs> to change the abilities to what makes sense for us. Quivering Tater. Quail. How's that? Quivering Quail. Sounds perfect. Guys, this is it. This is game number one, Team Oxygen Esports My, uh... versus Reborn. Looking at these drafts, Reborn has got a nasty draft, but Team Oxygen has a they have a team that plays so well together. Shane, are you ready to do this, brother? I'm not. My okay. game crashed. Give me just a moment here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a load so of the much game. Hype. I was so loading it to the re I was loading <laughs> to the replay. <laughs> I was loading the replay, getting ready for, for everything, and all of a sudden boop. We're, we're I actually think a quick took break, guys. We're gonna the restart wrong this whole replay. Thing. Yep, we're going back to week one. That's it. Let's show this draft over. again. Podcast. We're going back. <laughs> Give me just a second. Okay, okay. We're we're good. We're good. I'm I'm all prepped up, ready to rock and roll. And uh the these this is the epitome. This is the highest level of Paragon in North America. These two teams, guys, expect to see expect to have your mind blown. Team Oxygen versus Team Reborn. They both have already qualified. They're fighting for pride, they're fighting for cash. And that is going to get the blood coursing through your veins. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have the distinct honor and privilege of introducing a team I have been casting for over a year, Reborn. Nato Sick on Yin, Sola Nazgul on Gideon, Reflect picking up the Greystone, J. Leo Grande, Joseph on the Rampage, Master Splinter, a.k.a. Vecron, picking up the Decker. Okay, oh, I'm boy. I'm not even oh in. Baby. I'm not even in. Look at this. Boom! Surprise, mother... Med's going in, but look, Reborn knew about it. Reborn knew about it. What did he level up? Did he get Subjugator Soul Siphon? He has Soul Siphon, but it doesn't matter. J. Leo goes down the first blood of this series. Goes over to Team Oxygen, but Reborn are not going to allow this to get away. Someone hit Phasma! Master Splinter gets the kill. Let's get him onto a carry. Stasis Bomb hits Emsco, able to get away. These guys already going at each other's throats. We are in for a treat, ladies and gentlemen, if this shows how these games are going to be going. So now I'm going to get the opportunity to <laughs> announce Team Oxygen Esports. Phasma is going to be playing Phase Meds, that nasty Severog in the jungle. Arsenic is going to be playing Moragesh, TeamReborn.net, or Ram Riddles is going to be playing Bellica in the offlane in Imsco is going to play mid lane the twin Ooh. blast already getting aggressive on the solo nazgul here with that uh, energy lance uh -oh. and grenade spam i mean are they looking for a kill this early i love the aggression out of imsco i i love this too it's phase twin blast man what can you do there's just so much harassment potential i think getting is the linchpin of this composition getting they pick this getting in mind going nazgul your black holes are gonna have to carry us then Oxygen said, okay, we're just going to 2v1 you and try to make sure that Nazgul has very little steam, if any, building up to level 5. Gideon, his early game is unmatched in terms of how quickly he comes online. The moment Gideon's level 5, he has kill potential, almost regardless of farm. That certainly helps. Nonetheless, though, I really like the decision to once again roll with the duo mid. The last time we see team, saw Team Oxygen dominating the competition this is what yielded them success this dual lane and they're falling back to what got them there before so i i'm interested in this yin pick shane yin for me with the the uh, ability they have this. to set up fights yin late game is just she's nasty she's nasty she's she's got one her quelling gale uh and it, it slows it it blocks uh, projectiles but the big one of course is her windburn her windburn gives her 100 percent um cleave rating it goes through minions it goes through heroes now now picture this close your eyes I, everybody eyes in chat close your eyes Everyone close your eyes so we're sitting if i miss a, if i miss a fight here i'm apologizing it's okay you guys it's have okay. to imagine this so it's it, we're coming down to it it's a team fight okay. happening master Ooh. splinter stasis mm. bomb jay leo big. grande boulder solo Ooh. nazgul well done black hole Oh my god. And then all of a sudden Windburn comes out and you're all freaking dead. How do you answer that? There's nothing you can do at that point. You you're you're just going to die. The potential they have to combo is it's bananas. It's just bananas. And it's gonna be interesting to see how this pick plays out late game for NATO sick on Yen. I can't wait. I'm excited. More aggression in the mid lane here. Meds has got that purple buff. Solo Nazgul has to be very careful. And Meds said, Nope, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go deal with Reflect. Is he gonna go behind Reflect What's here? What's the call? What's Yin's ultimate going, call Mads? again, what's, He's just going to farm. What's Yin's ultimate called again, Notch? Uh, Yin's ultimate is called Quivering Gale. Okay, just making sure. Got it. Greystone, not the flashiest of heroes, but we've talked about uh, teams we saw uh, uh, for hold the on, EU qualifiers. Hold on, look at Grande here. There's a guy that got that combo. There's magic. a stasis bomb into a boulder. TeamReborn.net is very the low. Is there, there is going to be the backlash. Uh, oh, sorry, the last few rounds, do they have it? They have it. They're going to oh, do it. Oh, there's the final swipe right there. That was Grammarils almost pulled off a very tricky escape, but they were able to secure the kill right there. And that's a good start. That's a very good start. We Grammarils is such a talented hero. If you're able to put him on the back foot, which is very difficult to do, you really can, from there, run any sort of tactic shortly thereafter if you can mitigate his presence on the field. Ah. Uh, I, I'm I'm so hyped right now, Shane. I just can't control it. We're five. We're we're four minutes in, about thirty seconds into the th forty four minutes forty seconds into this game here. We've seen a little bit of aggression early. Uh, we're gonna see, we're continuing to see a lot of prioritization and poke on Solo Nazgul in the mid lane, which yeah. they need to do. Like you said, once he gets five, Shane, he has the potential. Not only does he get kill potential, but the potential to set up team fights. Potential for Reborn to start playing around Black Hole really becomes evident at that five-minute mark. With the amount of stuns and the aggression that comes out of Master Splinter and Leo Grande, I think that's the big thing we're waiting for, is that level five on Gideon. And then we'll start to see a little bit more rotating come out of these guys as they look for kills. 
But the thing about the dual lane mid is if Nazgul rotates off, it's going to be very, very obvious. But more importantly, it's going to be easy to punish. Imsko and Phasma can clean up that tower at a moment's notice. All they really need is a siege minion. And that tier 1 tower can fall very, very early. Look at this flank coming out. J. Leo, the moment you, you called it, Notch, couldn't have said it any better. Level 5 was hit and like clockwork. Leo and Master Splinter, like the Bruiser Brothers that they are, rotate around through the weak side of the jungle. A common route for those ganks and pick up a kill over onto Phasma. Imsco would have been the best situation there, but still, they're building up steam, they're building up momentum, and Nazgul already getting good, valuable black holes. It's like I've casted games before, Shane. Impressive. <laughs> well done, Notch. <laughs> Just great rotation from those guys. Master Splinter. I mean, like you said, Imsco is the target you want to pick up. You want to deny him that farm. Imsco, he doesn't have any kills yet, but he's at 32 last hits. Uh, he's at 9 card power, 10 card power now. Raptors are going to come into play in about 4 minutes here. One of the things we always see Reborn do, and I'm sure we're going to see it this game, is between 9 minutes and 30 seconds and 11 minutes, they look for a gank, they look for a fight, and they instantly go for the Raptors. I don't expect to see the black hole be used until they look for that gank, and then a I Raptor agree. pick up in about 11 minutes. Uh, Nazgul put on a masterful display of patience in the uh, games we casted in yesterday with the Gideon, where he wasn't... Yeah. It, it's very easy as Gideon to see three or four people grouped up, and you'd be like, oh, this is my time, this is my moment. Nazgul instead waited for team fights to break down after the fact, waited for important stuns to be down, or for an important target to be in retreat mode, then he would go into Black Hole. And again, it was the snare, at, or the slow aspect of the Black Hole where he was using to such great effect. The damage was more of an afterthought, it's that control mechanism that it was uh, buffed on that reflect. Level 5, time to dive, but unfortunately, Nazgul was just a moment too short uh, showing up to that. He uh, must not have had Black Hole online. Either way, trying to open up the map for Reflect is going to go a long way. Morgash versus Greystone, though, because it is dual mid, this means Reflect is in a 1v1 situation. Normally, you would say Greystone is, thrives in that, but against a Morgash, I got to say, Morgash is one of those few heroes, I think, that actually can deal with this Greystone very, very well. Yeah, I mean, with that poke, with the hive and the mark, mark's going to give you that big burst damage, but then you're going to have 12 seconds of a slow, painful tick. And once Arsenic gets Tainted Magic online, that's just going to be that slow burn that deals yeah. quite a bit of damage to this hero. But Greystone, though, Shane, once Greystone, once we see Reflect pick up the Radiant Sa radiant Mantle, uh, and you almost the, did it again. I, I almost have called it Radiant Sash. I've been getting back mixed up <laughs> for like a month now. Once he picks up the Radiant Sash, um, and he goes with that Tainted Magic, we're going to see Reflect be able to have that this 1v1 potential. Get very, very tanky, but also have the potential to deal a lot of damage and really uh, uh, mess with the backline, really jump back there and, and, and impede the progression of Arsenic and Imsco and really try to shut them down. I got to say, give it up to Solo Nazgul. He's been playing 1v2, but you, you wouldn't think so. His tower is about to fall. Not much you can do about that. But in terms of his ability to farm and retain... Uh, level experience. He's been doing a really good job keeping up with Arsenic, who would have been his normal 1v1 partner if the lanes were standard coming out from Team Oxygen. So, uh, already, I mean, he, he set up kills, but more importantly, this one, this 2v1 lane that he's having to deal with really hasn't done much in terms of slowing down the progression of Gideon. So, take, uh, eight minutes into the game, taking a look at the cards here. We've got Leo Grande. He's got Mad Spore Mantle online, as does Meds. Arsenic has already got a thick blood out to deal with Leo Grande and his regen uh, with Rampage. Now, Rampage, we've seen a lot of Rampage recently, Shane, in the in the past couple yeah. of weeks where he's really come back into play. I think it has a lot to do with, of course, the buff of Mad Spore Sash allows him to give uh, allows him to clear a little bit more effectively. Oh, well, Leo's getting damage. caught out. Now he's going to have to use the Enraged. Phasma stunned up. The blind is there. <laughs> Leo's going to say, all right, I don't know what's happening, so I'm going to jump away. The rest of Reborn now rotating, but uh, a little bit of exchange of blows, no one getting taken down. Yeah, no exchange. I mean, you pop a big ultimate, though. Getting enraged out of the picture, it will be up here. Pretty, uh, it, it's not an insane cooldown, but it will be up. Once it comes back up, it's right now. Do you look for a team fight now that you know that ultimate's down? Do you look for that? Uh, now we can engage. Now we can get aggressive in the jungle because he's not going to have the ability to regen that health. Uh, he's going to pick up the, the black buff. He's going to back off. That was right at that 930 mark, Shane. They were looking yep. for a fight to go for the, the uh, Raptors. And Oxygen was expecting it, and they countered it very well. Good rotation from the mid lane from Imsco and uh, Phasma. So expect, again, another fight here within the next few minutes as they set up for that Raptor engagement. 
Reflect continuing to get bullied out by Moragesh. There's a lot of members of Reborn on this side of the field. Is Arsenic aware of the rotation? A board hasn't given it away, but I think just a good game sense, recognizing that a lot of members of his opponent are off the field. He's immediately going to back up. And we see a little bit of a switch Reno here. NATO Sick and uh, Master Splinter now being put into the left lane. And I would imagine that's going to be Reflect up against uh, Rambertals here against the Belka. That matchup, def I mean, I don't think there's much kill potential there on either side, but Greystone will have a much easier time in this situation. And now Arsenic, he's been the bully, but now he has to be very, very careful. Yin, if she latches on to you, especially a hero who has no hard escape, no, uh, you know, torn space or blink or anything like that, can be cleaned up very, very easily, especially Purple if there's buff. any form of CC. Purple Jeff buff just spawned. Leo has it picked up. Purple Jeff. <laughs> He's rotating here. Are we going to see them look for an engagement? We don't have uh, uh, Master Splinter on Decker with them, so they're not going to have the CC they need to really combo a target down. But he does have the uh, Ward is going to scout him out there. Our meds actually has a purple buff as well, so he sees him. So they know what's happening here in the mid lane. <laughs> the I don't double think we're purple buff spawning. It, it's always funny when you get the double purple buff spawn and, and like you're both junglers get one and you're just kind of like yeah. standing at each other, like looking just like, I see you. I see you. What's up, man? <laughs> I, I see know where you're at. <laughs> we were going to do stuff in this mid lane, but now that you're here and I'm revealed, let's just look at each other for a minute. Yeah. Damn, you're pretty. I gotta say, Rampage and Grux, uh, or rather Severog, because that's what that hero is, um, are good stat at Arsenic over here. Guys, I do say one misses leg day and one is incapable of having leg day. Energy Did Lance, Master Splinter is going to get rooted up, but he's going to be okay. Already, Does he I miss think... Stasis Bombs chain. Uh. Master Splinter? Yeah, does he miss? I don't think he misses Stasis Bumps. Only when Epic deems it missed. <laughs> right? Right? 30% of the time? He's 30% uh, of the time, Decker's perfectly balanced. Um, I, I just, I feel like he's one of those heroes. You have like Leo with the boulder, where you watch them and it's like, okay, there's no way they're going to hit this because there's like a wall right there, but it lands. And you're like, how yes. do you hit that? I would have hit the wall. And it's the same with Master Splinter and a Stasis Bump. He just, he just never seems to miss. Nato Sick is going oh. to. Is the hive damage there? The it's hive there. damage gets it. Now, can Leo get a turnaround kill? Subjugate is going to peel Grande away. There's Solo Nazgul. Sweeps in. Drops the meteor. Gets the kill. Now using the black hole. Does Meds have any way to escape out of this? I don't think he does. But the rest of the team. Here comes Imsko. Looking for a punishment. Grenade spam going down. Nazgul uses the torch oh, space. But he oh. gets him. Mid air as well. Good lord. That man can hit some place. shots. That was ridiculous gonna push him away that was looking good for reborn but that dual lane mid that's what it can do for you you can rotate at a moment's notice to a team fight if that was uh, if they were on the other side of the field there's no way they could have showed up in time shane the grenade placement mid-air go mid-air kill it right where where <laughs> solo nazgul was exiting the torn space and was just like yeah watch this buddy you think you're out of here and then the grenade picks him up before he even touches the ground Great game sense, great awareness of where that ability was going to, where, where <laughs> Gideon was going to appear and picking up that kill there. Really good engagement for both of these teams, Shane. Yeah, a couple people went down, but you saw the counter engagement. This isn't one of these games where we're going to see just free picks. Every now and then you'll pick up one or two, but mo both of these teams really rotate uh, effectively. Yeah. So once you see a team rotator, they're like, okay, hey, our mid laner's not here. We need to answer this. You'll see everybody rotate off as well. Raptors are being picked up right now. Uh, they, they again, uh, one of her strengths is picking up Raptors. Uh, again, yes, Windburn, that cool. power of the Windburn. That's a very good point. Her cleave, man, it's yeah, so ridiculous. Um, I'm I'm so glad that we're starting to see it. I've always loved this hero. I understand why she hasn't been picked up and why she's not as favored. But I mean, when it, we, when we first saw this draft, we first saw the Yen. We definitely were kind of like, wait, what? What? Not Sparrow? Not even Murdoch? And then we're like, wait. Quelling Gale, Black Hole, like there's so much potential there on top of uh, containment fence. We haven't seen those abilities line up yet. I expect the laning phase here to draw out a little bit longer between these two teams than normally uh, th than what we normally see. So it'll be a while before we see a true 5v5, I think. Raptors were taken, but both of these lineups have capabilities to take Raptors very easily without dedicating five people to it. But when it comes down to the 5v5, one well-placed Quelling Gale after a containment fence could literally be the end of a team fight for Oxygen. But Oxygen, they just have a very well-rounded play. Ramirez is on Bellica again. 
We saw last game against Arctic Wolves what that man's capable of in the hands of the lieutenant. He he's one of the best one v oneers in the game. It doesn't matter what hero he's on. Apparently, one v three ers as well. Exactly. But you put him in a one v one situation, and he tends to come out on top. It's like okay, like we could say all day that Reflect has has the advantage because he's on Greystone, but you don't want to take anything away from Team Reborn .net and his ability to to one v one and the potential he has when it comes to landing seismic assaults, void drone, void bomb, the way he combos everything off of himself. Uh, he's he's a fantastic player and one of the best offlaners for a reason. Reflect is also up there though as one of the best offlaners there, in the game. Yeah. <laughs> this is quite a matchup. It's going to be a uh, battle of sure will between these two offlaners. Reflect is don't get me Reflect isn't as flashy as Ramirdles. He's just extremely consistent and always is able to get work done. Arstic underneath his tower, he thought he was okay, but not if J. Leo Grande has anything to say about it. We do see Arstic actually picked up a kill onto Yen before getting taken out for himself. So a small exchange on either side of the field, a carry for uh, a Moragesh. Gotta say, Yen getting taken out, that's a very high priority target. So Oxygen coming out slimly ahead. That was a great boulder out of Leo right slimly there after that engagement. Let me Google that real quick. I mean, slimly. Let me check that. Slim I've been saying winningest. Lee. So. Winningest is a word. Slimly is a word. a word. No, it's not. It's perfect. Nope, it's not a word. Ah, oh, dang it. Good work. We're going to use it anyways. It's now a word. Uh, Leo Grande was so so after that engagement. After the Yin and the Morgash fell, they're they're going to retreat. We see the rotation the rotation coming out. Phasma shows up. Meds shows up. And Ims goes there. They're underneath that tier one tower. Master Splitter did a very good job dodging the subjugate. And instead of allowing um, meds to dash in and then land that colossal blow on Master Splinter, Jaleo Grande landed a perfect boulder and kept Master Splinter alive, stunned stunned meds in place, and allowed them to escape. So it could have been a much worse engagement for Reborn, but good heads up play, good teamwork coming out of Reborn, oh, no, isn't making working. sure making sure everybody gets out alive. It is a word. I just spelled it wrong. We're good. Nailed it, Scott. Get at me. I'm giving you that grade A analytics and Shane's Googling slimly, ladies and gentlemen. You and I have built up over the past year of casting with each other, man. We can just we can bounce stuff off of each other, man. It's, uh, what can you say? Let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the numbers here. We haven't had much opportunity to talk about it. Uh, small opportunity, so let's jump in that before these teams once again go at each other. CS pretty even with a slim margin over to Team Oxygen. Taking a look at the numbers as a whole, though. It's really hard to say if one team has a, a discernible advantage over the other notch. Piff, did you mute us? <laughs> I was looking at chat, and Piff's like, sorry, the mute. He got sick of our conversation. was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to hear this. <laughs> There's a, yeah, there is a We're just trying to get you to dance, chat. That's all. A little <laughs> bit of music to get the, get, get the flow going. It's all good. There's this when you look at these engagements, Shane. Even even tell me Reborn, it was Sandstorm. Was it Sandstorm? <laughs> if, if it wasn't Sandstorm, I'm disappointed. Reborn and Oxygen, they can play from behind. They have the ability to where even if they do have a slight disadvantage, the way they play as a team can make up for that. So this isn't one of those where oh god, Imsco's got a four point card advantage or NATO does. This, these are both of these teams where in a team fight and in an engagement, card points are important. Yes. But how well do these guys perform as a team? And both of these guys, there's a reason they're here today. There's a yep. reason they're in the finals. There's a reason both of these teams are, for most, considered the two best teams in, in the competitive scene. No one is surprised that these guys are facing each other right now. There, there's there's no surprise factor Leo's, right here. Leo's got the purple buff. He's behind oh, Arsenic here. I don't think Arsenic knows it's coming. The black hole being used just to make just to ensure this kill. Nazgul was like, I'm not giving you any chance to escape from this, and he's going to get the kill. Tainted Magic now picked up on Gideon as well. Tainted Magic is really, man, I mean, we were heroes like Morgesh and Gideon, that's to be expected, but now we're starting to see it on uh, Greystone, and we've actually, it's uh, it's sort of a luxury card, but it's not uncommon to see that card picked up if the game goes the distance on phase as well. It actually has, uh, puts out a lot of DPS with Energy Lance. Another Raptors were started here, but not picked up. Good rotation from Meds, Imsco, and Phasma coming out of that mid lane. 
that's the strength of this mid lane duo mid lane here, Shane, is that it opens up the map to them for Raptors. They can yeah. sit here and they can farm a little bit more effectively, knowing, okay, we don't have to rotate over to this lane. We don't have to switch lanes. We're just going to allow these two to sit here and farm. And if we need them in engagement, it's going to take you 15 to 17 seconds to rotate from mid to either one of these lanes. It's going to take you about seven seconds to get to Raptors. So they have the ability to just control where they want to be when they need to be there. That's what makes this duo mid really, really strong. And now Master Splinter and NATO Sick are hanging out in the mid lane as well to try and counter the farm of Imsco and Phasma because they've just been farming over here. Imsco, yeah. 113 last hits. NATO's at 121 creep score. Uh, because NATO has uh, picked up the Raptors, he is sitting at a little bit of an advantage, 31 card power. But again, when it comes to team play, both of these teams play so well together that that little card advantage really doesn't need much. Now the Raptors being picked up, look how fast yep. they're melted. All three of those Raptors headed over yeah, to NATO stick. Wow. Like, I, I barely even had time to turn my camera around, and all of a sudden, Yin picked those up. Reflect yeah, is just being that nuisance and trying to be a distraction. Jay Leo and Meds are going at each other while here in the mid lane. We see Nazgul and Reborn trying to fight some. There's a stun void bomb. Enough damage to get Nazgul down. I'm not sure. He immediately pops the black hole over on the Meds. There's not much they can do about it. Meds is isolated 1v3, but that's allowing the rest of his team to take down Grande. Arsenic gets the kill. Reflect coming out from the river buff. Maybe try to get something going here, but I don't know if they can. Reflect is essentially by himself. Meds and Imsco were low, but maybe Reflect baited himself out. Does he have the leap across? He's waiting for Storm the Gates to get into the high ground. He uses it. He's okay. That was a very close engagement on either side. I'm surprised Reborn didn't uh, lose any more that they did. It's only one kill. So for Reborn, I'm I'm saying that could have gone much worse. Let's be content with only giving up one kill. Right. I don't know if this was a misplay by Solo Nazgul, but Solo Nazgul torn spaced into the middle of that, and he did not black hole. He ended up backing off a little bit. And then yep. when he popped that black hole, he only got it onto mid. So I don't know if that was yep. a, a miscommunication where Leo was might have said, hey, no, no, don't engage this, but then overcommitted, and they, that's why there was that little bit of a Potentially. misplay. Because if he landed that black hole with his original torn space, it would have been onto four or five targets. And four or five targets into a torn space with tainted magic, that is... Ability damage equal to 8% of the target's current health. Everybody was relatively Correct. healthy there. That's a lot of damage over a four-second period of time. I always have to say uh, current health. Current health, yeah. People think it's maximum. No. So if you're only at a quarter HP, it's not doing that much damage. But it's, it, right. it loses value the lower your target gets. But, of course, it's still really good to... <laughs> it's still a, a very valuable item, nonetheless. Yeah, that definitely... I think that was a miscommunication there. Nazgul does have the Teleblink, so he has that uh, double-tiered maneuverability of I can teleblink in for Black Hole if I find myself in a situation where I need to get out. I have torn space to fall back on. Um, that's pretty much standard thus far. The few times we've seen, get, seen Gideon prior to this weekend, we expect to see that teleblink. And of course, it gives you insane chasing potential. Torn space uh, with a teleblink and all of a sudden, there's a Gideon on top of you when you weren't really expecting it. I really like this build from Nazgul. He has a Tainted Magic. One card I would love to see that we don't see much of uh, is like uh, um, either Bubble Tap or Nanoplasm. He actually Those has. That's he's actually using Bubble Tap right now. Oh, that's not a Teleblink. It's not it's a Teleblink. I just assumed tap. it was yeah. a Teleblink. Nope. Oh, okay. I, I, I literally just assumed it was Teleblink. So it it is the Bubble Tap there though. Okay. So I take everything back. Instead, right now though, he's he's simply relying on Torn Space to set up initiations. I wonder if he is going to be a Teleblink though. Only time will tell. When we take a look at the map, Shane, we've got a lot of ward coverage coming out for both of these teams. Solonaz goes in some trouble. He is going to use this ultimate. I don't know if he's going to be able to kill on this. Arsenic has the damage. Bubble Tap is out. They're going to keep ah, him alive against it. That. But Arsenic is going to pick up that kill anyways. So Bubble Tap was there to try and keep him alive. He just got a little bit overextended. Meds was coming behind. So even if he would have got away, uh, Meds was there to, to clean that up. So 1v1 engagement. Arsenic is going to pick up the kill on Solonaz. will and we're getting to that point, Shane, we're 25 minutes into the game. We're at the point now where a team engagement can set up the Orb Prime. Whoever yep. comes out cleanly in a team fight goes for the Orb Prime and really opens up the map control. So this is going to come down to which team has the better team engagement, which team has the better team fight. And we're seeing it right now in the Ooh, mid lane. Phasma just Phasma. deleted, Shane. That was a containment fence where they needed to find something. And now they're going to be able to mitigate the power play of Solonazgul getting picked up there. They'll have about 10 seconds where they will have a small advantage, but they turned what was a 5v4 into a 4v4. I really like that. And now, by the t uh, when both of them are back on the map, Raptors will be up for contention. Good play. I mean, yeah, it, it's only a, it's only a uh, phase kill, 
but it's still giving you a little bit of maneuverability and time to stabilize after uh, Nazgul was picked off. Yeah, and this tier one tower is still standing over here. Uh, Nazgul is back up. He's headed back over. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep this tower alive. I think at this point it doesn't really matter. It's more of a, hey, look, our tower is still standing. So they don't have to really worry about a very hard push in this lane unless they forget to set. But we're going to look at uh, 25 minutes into the game. We've got a little bit of a card lead coming out for NATO sick here. Raptors are going to be up in 20 seconds. As fast as Raptors have come up and as fast as NATO six able to clear them, I mean, we haven't seen much rotation coming out of oxygen for these Raptors. Are they just like, you know what, let's just get our farm someplace else. We know we we know Imsco is going to last hit every minion he can. If he's yep. only four points behind at this, when we get into a team engagement, he doesn't miss basic attacks, and he's got that grenade spam. Are they just looking for that? What do you think they're looking for? Why we why haven't Meds we seen the priority there? Careful here. Okay, Faust was going to get the pull off there. Meds was in dire waters there, but Faust was going to be that trusty lifeguard. Reflect has been farming. I mean, both Reflect and Riddles have been farming uh, exceptionally well, but uh, I'm not sure if my... Disp I, I'm pretty sure I have a bug, though. I, I don't think Ram Riddles is only at 24 card experience in here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but Reflect is actually even with Imsco, maybe a little bit behind here, but that's actually insane, a Greystone keeping up with a Twin Blast. That's uh, really a testament to Reflect, just making sure Greystone hasn't been a, a massive presence on the map, but he's been doing a really good job at making sure Ram Riddles is just delegated uh, and, and mitigated to underneath his own Tier 2 tower. So uh, Reborn, Team Reborn.net is sitting at 38 card power and Reflect okay, both 30 sitting at 38 insane. card power, yeah. Um, I was so he's, say. They're, they're both farming effect. Uh, Re Reborn's just been completely shut. Team Reborn.net's been completely shut down by Reflect. By Reborn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's getting no farm at all. If you take a look at this, this uh, the creep score, both of these guys are pretty close. Raptor's coming into play here again. Gin uh, just melts him. There's nothing yeah. you can do. Just just melts the Raptor. She's got all three. She, I get 43 card power right now. We're going to see crit coming online. She's got the attack speed. Crit bonus is most likely going to be the next item we see her pick up. Uh, and in these engagements, she's really going to become a nuisance. I got to say, if we start... It, 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 it looks likely that this game is going the distance, just judging by how the side lanes are just 1v1s where they're pretty much just banging each other's heads against the wall and just farming. It's really down to the uh, support jungler and carry who are setting up plays thus far inside of this game. If that's the case, I, I favor Reborn's lineup in the late game by quite a bit. Uh, Greystone, he transitions, transitions into the late game extraordinarily well. Yin is just a disgusting DPS engine. Comes 60 card points. Twin Blast is too, but doesn't hold up a candle to the amount of damage that Yin can put out. And of course, Gideon, his damage may not be uh, transition well into the late game, but it, it's all about that black hole setting up devastating, uh, lighting people up for Yin to devastate them. So I think we're for the long run here, man. The The fact that we're 28 minutes in, into this game and we're still have a, a very concrete laning phase, I won't be surprised if uh, you know we see support start getting luxury items, so on and so forth. Yeah, we've got Master Splinter right now, Honor the Pier, Quenching Scales Online, plus the Stasis Gem. Uh, build, starting to build some health into his Lord's Ward. Phasma, Stasis Gem Online, Cast Converter, Quenching Scales. A little bit of health in that Lord's Ward. We've got Tainted Magics out for both Re Reflect and Solo Nazgul. We've got a Hydroverser out for Reborn.net. So we're starting to see, I mean, 42 card power. We're starting to see some of these late game builds are starting to take shape here. And this is going to be one of those, again, out of respect for both of these teams because how well they play, we're not yeah. seeing the over-aggression. We're not seeing meds blink in blindly trying to land a subjugate. That would he's, be cool. He's, that would be amazing. But they respect each other's play style. They know that it's it's one fight. We go. One fight will determine this match. And they're baiting the Orb Prime right now. Is Oxygen going to fall for this? NATO does not have lifesteal, so they have to be careful about this. Of course, Leo can just heal up using that Enraged. We've seen so many teams fall for this. Does Oxygen have a plan to deal with this? Orb Prime down. Nazgul actually gets taken out, which means even if you do get the Orb Prime, it may not be that good. Containment space used, and Oxygen now gonna kill onto Nado Sick. No Yin, no Nazgul. 
Oxygen waited patiently, let the sixth member of their team, aka Orb Prime, do the work for them. They get two kills, and now they're going to swing to the Orb Prime, and they're going to pick it up themselves. Finally, we see these guys, after laning for so very long, Reborn make a bold play, but it crashes right back into them. Team Oxygen, are they going to be able to pick up a Tier 2 tower here? The defense from Reborn, I'm not sure if they're capable of it. With 30 seconds without a Yen, 40 seconds without a Gideon, I think it is uh, time to write a goodbye letter to the jump pads. Reborn just said, hey, we've mastered, or I'm not sorry, Reborn, Oxygen said, we've mastered this. This is our strat. You're not going to yep. bait us into this. We're going to wait till you're <laughs> low. We're going to come yep. in, and I don't know if you saw it or not, if you guys were paying attention, Med was making sure he was attacking the Orb Prime, so it did Oh, that Colossal Blow into Leo, beautifully done! He gets the subjugate onto him, and now, my lord, Oxygen are trying to win this game right now. The inhibitors are full, Master Splinter's in a stasis gym at that point, just trying to delay the inevitable. Reflect, at best, is just going to get his ultimate popped. He still might be able to go down. Oxygen, through a series of missteps on the side of Reborn, all of a sudden are in control. 31 minutes, now have their eyes on the left inhibitor. And despite the fact that Nato Sick has a healthy lead uh, uh, over Imsco, he can't overcome the fact that they've now been in a 3v5 situation for upwards of a minute straight here. Prime card's still online, inhibitor taking damage, Imsco popping off on it. I do not believe there is an ultimate. Nazgul goes in. Is there any way to interrupt this? Can they get out of it? The pull from Phasma. Good positioning. That's how you deal with it. Now Nazgul gets targeted. Again, Ram Riddles. The Void Bomb. The Seismic Assault takes him out. That's how they've won the Orb Prime. Was Ram Riddles getting a kill on the Nazgul. And now maybe that's how they win this game. Forcing him back. Oh, the curse used onto Nato Sick. Not enough damage. And he's going to be able to heal back to the base. But they lose the inhibitor. And Team Oxygen, just this game was just a very conservative, calculated game. Then Team Oxygen say, don't worry, we got this. Two inhibitors, no time short. And they are full steam ahead. So I'm going to point out a couple things that happened in that last engagement chain at the Orb Prime. Leo Grande and Nato Sick got that down to about 25% health. They then, once Solo Nazgul got picked up, they started to back off and wanted to engage with their team. At that point, they were kind of in this weird best of weird pound position. Uh, best of pound. Hashtag best of pound. They were in this. They were in this weird position where they were being pincered. They were being. They, they had players on either side of the map from from oxygen. Meds had a really really strong play there. Shane. He kept attacking the orb prime to make sure it didn't reset after Yin died, and he was he had faith that his team was going to come in. Be able yep. to clean that up. The moment that uh, Reborn started to back off, they then picked up the the Orb Prime and, of course, took two inhibitors. What I would have liked to see is Reborn knew we messed up. We got played here, and Yin take the Orb Prime. She had the damage to do it. With Leo standing there taking it, they had the, the possibility of taking that Orb Prime and denying it, and then maybe they wouldn't have lost two inhibitors. So I think it was two massive misplays by Reborn trying to bait the creative crew of Oxygen who basically have mastered that strat of the bait and switch and not picking up the Orb Prime to deny that from, from Oxygen and allowing these two inhibitors to fall. Taking a look at Reflex build here, we haven't really looked at it. We mentioned the Tainted Magic. He's had that for quite some time, though. Now starting to build into Tank Stone. He has a 6-point tune barrier and now an 11-point tune barrier. So ability damage is not going to be doing much to him. The man with two lives. going to be difficult to take down from the ability damage front. Imsco really only the odd... Yeah, Imsco is really the only basic attack damage in this. Uh, the rest of the damage coming out from Team Oxygen is primarily ability damage. So tune barrier has a lot of value this game. Reflex is going to be difficult to take down, and as I say that, he's just taking a lot of damage. Nazgul comes in, Black Hole, but Team Reborn immediately, Team Reborn down at AKA Ram Riddles, uses the Stasis Gem to avoid the damage, but he is isolated, he gets picked apart, NATO's finally starting to bring to the table what we've been wanting, and that is a plethora of damage. The uh, Quelling Gale has been used, nailed it, and is going to isolate the Bellica and get him there. So Reborn, they bounce back right there. Nazgul has really been trying to find a good black hole, and it has eluded him thus far. Finally, now, gets a decent black hole. The follow-up from Reborn is there. They get two kills, but because they're behind two inhibitors, I'm not sure that there's much that they can do. There's, I mean, you, you've already have Leo Grande who's had to back off and try to clear this lane. And Rampage, yes, he has Mad Spore. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to change it now. I'm just going to stick with it. Mad Spore, Mantle, online. And... <laughs> 
which gives him a little bit of farm, but you really want Yin or Gideon here dealing with these waves. Yin is such a great uh, uh, counter if, if your inhibitors are down. Again, I've, I've mentioned it many, 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 many times, and I'm going to mention it again. That windburn shade, the hundred percent cleave, with crit online, with lifesteal online, she gets to just eat through these minion waves and keep these lanes pushed out. Two inhibitors down though, Shane. Reborn has to make sure they push these lanes to a minimum midfield. Yep, because if the they take an scrimmage. engagement and they don't have these pushed to midfield, it doesn't matter if they win an engagement, they're gonna have to send two people to back to deal with these lanes. It's something they're gonna have to do every time and they really have to focus on mid lane. Oh, you might be in some trouble in Rage is used. It's going to mitigate the curse. Arsenic was trying to get that down before Leo had an opportunity to use his ultimate, but he's going to stay alive. Leo is level 13, so it's only a 40-second cooldown. Liberal application of the ultimate on Rampage can, uh, on Rampage can be used uh, quite freely now, so he should be okay. They're not too upset about that exchange. He had to use an ultimate, but he will be back in the fight no time short. Talking more about what you were just talking about, Notch, being down those two inhibitors. Reborn has two extraordinarily good tools at dealing with that constant wave push, though. One in Reflect on Greystone, and two on NATO Sick on Yen. So, yes, they are behind, and they are going to have a hard time getting any sort of presence on the map. At least they have the tools to do so. Right. But it's just, for me, it's just that focus. I mean, look at look at... Oxygen already postured around or Prime. They know it's spawning soon. They've got minions out or they've got wards out. They're sitting there. They're, they they know that this is going to be the objective. Reflect right now doing what Reflect should be doing and that split pushing. Yep. Are we going to yep. see a flank onto meds here and arsenic? Is it coming behind? Nope. There is no vision there, but just good map awareness and they are going to back off. So they're going to split push that out, allow uh, Reflect to get that pushed out past the mid. They now have to get ready for Orb Prime because it's spawning in just a second. And Oxygen, they are going to be able to really set these waves against Reborn, considering all of the, the both the left and the mid, you couldn't ask for a worse situation other than all of your inhibitors being down to deal with. So Reborn, they're going to have to have a lot of planning ahead if they're going to want to, to contend over this Orb Prime. And they've done that. Reflect pushed out that wave past mid, uh, past the river. It's now pushing out mid past the river. And this is allowing Reborn to go in onto the Orb Prime. I feel like Oxygen's almost just fading this out, inviting him. Meds looming around the corner, keeping an eye on it. All five team members are here for Oxygen. Reflect can show up at a moment's notice. It's just who's going to initiate, who's going to look for it. Keep an eye on Ram Riddles. There's the containment fence. Reflect goes in. The black hole is used. Can they interrupt it? I don't know if they can. Leo Grande needs to pop the ultimate. He's so very low. Can they get the kill? Both carries are down. Leo Grande is still alive. He's still there. Oh, oh no. He actually dead. does get taken out. Reflect does not have the ultimate, but this is reborn with three down. They only were able to pick up the carry player of Imsco. He is down, but I'm not sure what else that Reborn can do. It's only a Decker. It's only a Greystone. Reflect can play as best as he possibly can, but I'm not sure that they're going to salvage this situation. That was a beautiful initiation. The three-man containment fence, the black hole is there, but Team Oxygen still come out of that team fight victorious. So, <sighs> we saw this happen yesterday, Shane. Oxygen versus finesse. Oxygen in both games they won against finesse allowed oh, finesse to engage flex. on the orb prime. <laughs> After they allowed them to this to is... engage on the orb prime, oxygen would go in and clean them up. I don't know if he has the ability to defend this here. Reflect is the lone man standing. No ultimate's gonna go in there. Meds is pretty low. He's trying to do what he can. He's trying to slice down Arsenic, but the damage is from Imsco missing. Gets the kill on the meds. Is Reborn going to hold? I think they are. NATO sick flings for him. Gets Ram Riddles. They hold. They keep themselves in this game. Their core is wounded only at 15%. I thought Reborn were going to be down, but they still are going to come back and keep themselves in this match thus far. 14 members of Oxygen down. Can Reborn turn this into an inhibitor? Inhib in inhibit her? Uh, it's going to be hard to say here. I, I mean, they, they just they just took out four. This opens up Orb Prime for them. Uh, they can take this Orb Prime, and they could they could. Oh, I mean, this is a mass. This could be a massive push here. You're right. I I I cannot believe that. I mean, Reflect was able to hold that as well as Team Oxygen. If if, if Imsco was there, that was the game. But lacking the damage from Twin Blast was the difference maker. 
Reflect is over here pushing this lane out. NATO sick, Leo Grande, they're picking up the orb primes. They still have 15... I mean, they're, they're going to have uh, 15 seconds of a power play here. They've got the mid lane pushed out. They've got the clear potential. Are they going to be able to... to... <laughs> Are they going to be able to, to do more with this? Shane. Mid lane, it's pushed out hard. Defense. They're going to get this tier two tower. Jay Leo Grande has right lane set, left lane. They don't really have to worry about anytime soon. It's going to be a 5v5 for the mid lane. If they can even up the inhibitor, that is what Reborn needs to keep themselves flowing inside of this match. It's still going to be so difficult for them to take victory here. This is just a matter of trying to even the odds. Even if they do get two inhibitors, though, it doesn't change the fact that their core is at nearly 15% and they're always going to have to have someone protecting it to make sure that it does not get back backdoored. Uh, I mean, in this sort of situation, anytime someone is missing for too long of a period, you're sending someone back to your core to make sure that isn't the case. Right lane being pushed in, reflect in mid lane. This is how you use the Greystone. Keep an eye on Nazgul, keep an eye on Yin. Those are the ones that are going to be able to take this game if they do so right here, right now. Jay Leo, double stun from Ramnos. The Void Bomb is there. The Gar's Curse goes down. Leo Grande still alive. Survives through the Onslaught. Barely, narrowly, but this could be the turnaround. There's Nazgul going in after the fact. Ramnos has the stasis gem, but can he keep himself alive after the fact? The Quelling Gale is there, but NATO's sick. That's too much damage. One down on the side of Team Oxygen. Reborn. Core at 15%. Two inhibitors down. Prime card fighting under the core. They have to be careful. Reflex died. There is the Reforged coming back, but he has to get out. If Reflex gets taken out, this could be a big misplay on the side of Reborn, but he's so tanky with us primary source damage being ability armor and Reflect having so much ability armor. They can He can do plays like that. They get the inhibitor. They get a kill, but they have to retreat. Look at left lane. They have to retreat right now. Still, Reborn, they are showing the signs of a comeback. If they get out here, Shane, the chase is still happening. Meds, Arsenic, Phasma, all on the way. You got that long range slow uh, out of Energy Lance from Phasma into a subjugate, plus the damage of, of Moragesh. They are going to back off. Reflex is at full health. He's here to deal with this mini wave. Another mini wave should be spawning. This is anybody's team. This is anybody's engagement. One team fight will dictate the flow of this. If Reborn loses one or two people in the next fight, they could possibly lose this game. And the same could be said for Oxygen. One solid team fight from either one of these teams with inhibitor being open for Reborn. They can come back and win this. And also just an over uh, aggressive push out of Oxygen with two inhibitors open and the core only at 15%. All they have to do is sneeze on it at this point. They can win this game. So this game is not over yet. This is anyone's game oh. as of this moment in time. I mean, we saw we saw major misplays by Reborn, and then Arctic, or, uh, Team Oxygen just getting over aggressive and reflect with that God plays, defending his his core and allowing his team to pick up the Orb Prime and take down an inhibitor. Oh, he, he, they I mean, won twenty five hundred dollars. They they want twenty five hundred dollars so bad. They want to go out and have a good time tonight. <laughs> I was going to say Greystone with the purple buff, not necessarily the most threatening thing in the world. Raptors are an afterthought here. Both carries are maxed out at 60 card points on each side of the field. At this point, it's maybe trying to buffer uh, some other priority heroes on your team to make up for that. Reflect is at 60 card points. I, I, I alluded to the fact that I think this game is going to go the distance, and that is the case. Uh, Meds is going to be hitting 60 card points soon, and Leo's not too far off himself. So uh, luxury items on your support, something we don't see that often, but maybe some uh, purity sensors to deal with the CC chain on the side of Reborn for Phasma. I wouldn't be surprised he actually does. He does have the Tain and Magic, so he's already getting the luxury item that FaZe uh, so loves. Energy Lance plus Tain and Magic does a, a deceiving amount of damage. It messes with that front line pretty bad. I mean, heroes like uh, Re um, Greystone and uh, Rampage is really going to affect them with their high health pools. Uh, and Yeah, they may have the, the ability damage, but it's still a lot of damage coming out. I like this play from Reborn. They know they have a lane pushing against Oxygen. They want to... They're trying to stabilize uh, a lane here as well. Do we see them group up and push mid and go for the inhibitor that's already damaged? Do we see them group up and try to take a fight? Looks like they're going to try and, and regroup at mid and possibly take an engagement at mid. I mean, Gideon, Solanaz will just kind of hanging out at midpoint and say, hey, somebody come out. I'm just waiting here. When it comes to map vision, Reborn has a perimeter set up across... I mean, <laughs> they almost painted uh, sort of like a, a, a leaning tower of a Christmas tree on the left side of a map here. There's very, very small vision. 
four team oxygen, despite the fact that they have two inhibitors down, just the superior late game wave clear available to reborn allows them to do this. Look they at the push are, already coming out of, of, of oxygen. Hard in the right lane. Reflect, is he going to back or are we going to see there's there's a decision to be made here for reborn? Are they going to say reflect, continue to push down left and we'll defend 4v5? Look at Meds. He's not going to allow them to back. Meds is here and will not let them back. He's blinking forward. He's subjugating them up. Look at Meds solo, keeping them away from the inhibitor and reborn's not going to be here in time. Meds is the guy staring him up. They do alive. Imsco, did he get too far forward? Nope. Phasma pulls away. J. Leo Grande already preemptively in a position for Phasma. He uses the stasis gem though. NATO's so low. NATO's taken out. Nazgul uses the black hole but it may be too late it's just a whiff ram riddles seismic assault void bomb gets yet another kill oxygen they can feel the victory in this game it has eluded them so far 45 minutes into it but reborn up against the ropes reflect now showing up but unfortunately there's no team to support him it's oxygen gonna get knocked up again from ram riddles the man doesn't miss seismic assaults he's been playing out of his mind today and even if Reflect and Master Splinter live here, I do not see a way for Reborn to keep their core alive. Phasma used the pull on to Emsco. I thought Emsco was dead, but that's the strength of FaZe. Pulling them into safety. All five team members of a lot alive on the side of Team Oxygen. The core to fall. Game number one. Going over to Oxygen. Reborn were showing signs of life. They were resilient. They bent, they bent, and finally, at the last moment, they finally broke. Guys, this is only game one. Welcome to Paragon. <laughs> Welcome to Paragon. Meds with that great play in the mid lane, being aggressive, chasing them down, trying to make sure that they're not able to back, make sure they're not able to get there. They aggressive blink forward into the subjugate, left Leo Grande uh, to, a little bit far back for that engage. Reborn, uh, uh, sorry, Reflect was pushing the lane. It took him a little bit of uh, time to get back into that engagement. And just, they picked people apart. There was no peel for NATO Sick. NATO Sick, uh, Meds was all over NATO Sick. They were able to pick up that kill on him. Solo Nazgul's ultimate. It came in, but everybody was on the outskirts of it. They didn't. They, he didn't get that pull that he needed to pull everybody back in. Master Splinter missed a, he missed. He, he didn't get one person. He missed everybody in that containment fence. And Oxygen capitalized on the misplays, and they won that game. Reborn, if you're watching, don't try and bait and switch Oxygen. They pulled it against you twice, <laughs> and it worked for them both times. Really good game coming out of both of these teams. Oxygen just played a little bit better, and they take game number one. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting Paragon Competitive League. We're going to take a quick break and jump into game number two in just a minute.